Bill Carollo is at the podium right now. He is the head of the officials. He is the officials coordinator. He's going to talk to us about some of the changes this year. Uh, in three different areas where I think the program is at today. Uh, secondly, talk a little bit about the points of emphasis, what we've been doing in the off season uh, with our officials and also working with the coaches as far as the key points from the NCAA and the CFO as far as uh, officiating points of emphasis. And then end in the last area, talk about the new rules. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about in detail about the new rules at the end, but I would like to make sure that uh, this is an off season, um, an off year, if you will, for uh, rule changes. And we have five major changes uh, in the rules this year. So um, uh, circling back, um, you, we, I heard from all the coaches today, and as you heard today, and what makes a great team and what they're looking for. And it's very similar to officiating. Uh, it, it takes teamwork, it takes leadership, it takes hard work, preparation, and, and overcoming obstacles. And when I take a look at what I heard earlier today, it's very, very similar for our officials. Uh, our goal three years ago when I took over was to be the best officiating staff in the country. We're making progress uh, on that goal. I'm not saying that we're the best in the country at all, but I would probably tell you that we're probably the hardest working and we invest more in officiating than any other conference in the country. So I'm proud of that. I'm proud of the relationship, the teamwork that we have with the coaches, um, as well as the commissioner's support uh, for the officiating program. Um, I think we're in pretty good shape uh, as far as our staff is concerned. We do grade our officials on every play, every game, and they have to grade out, and if they don't grade out, uh, they'll have a limited schedule or, or they'll be move, moved off the staff. So there is a, a, a great deal of accountability for our officials and a lot of pressure, and we need to change uh, the attitude on officiating uh, that I've seen uh, going back 10, 15 years. Uh, this is not a part-time job. It's a year-round job. We've been spending the last six to seven months uh, training and not just working on the areas that we needed some improvement from officiating, uh, but even in the areas of leadership. Recently, we brought a uh, four-star general in to talk to our referees about what leadership really means. Um, a couple weeks ago, we brought in a cardiac um, uh, doctor to talk about stress management. How do you handle the tough calls under pressure? So we're trying to improve, but we're not going to be perfect. Uh, but I think we're in pretty good shape. The points of emphasis that we have this year has to, has to do with player safety. That has not changed. That's been our mantra for the last several years, and we'll continue to work on um, uh, the health and safety of the, of the players. Um, a second area in that area is unsportsmanlike conduct. Not a problem in the Big Ten at all. We only had a couple occurrences where we, we thought that we needed to throw a flag last year for unsportsmanlike acts. Uh, the coaches have done, uh, done a great job in this area managing their players. Uh, they're young and they're excitable, uh, but the bottom line is um, they're very much under control and the game is being well managed from the coaches and officials standpoint. Uh, the last area is the new rules. I mentioned this is an off year for new rules, but we had five major changes on the rule changes um, this year. Uh, it has to do with the kickoffs, so you'll notice that we'll be kicking from a different kick line. We're moving to the 35, and if we do have a touchback on a, a kickoff, we'll be moving to the 25. We're also giving the receivers on punts and kickoffs the opportunity to make that catch, unmolested chance to catch an onside kick. Um, and I, we can talk into uh, more detail on that, but it all goes back to player safety, and each one of these changes has to do with player safety. Uh, the, the punt protector, the shield be, uh, for the punter, uh, you cannot leap over that, that wall there. Uh, that would be a personal foul uh, new this year. And I think the last area um, uh, that we talked about uh, a lot last year was low blocks. We've expanded that area as far as low blocks is concerned for player safety. And, um, and we thought that would be a problem last year, but uh, the coaches understood the rule. The players understood what they can and can't do, who the restricted players are and the unrestricted players. And the last one that maybe uh, might draw them so far this year the most con conversation uh, has to do with when players' helmets come off. And, and there's ramifications if the player comes off. We've been monitoring helmets coming off on these players. And we've had, even in the Big Ten, we've had one, one game, we had over 25 helmets come off in one game. So we've monitored that. We've looked at the, what we should do about it. Uh, should we charge them a timeout? Should we send them out of the game? Should it be a five-yard penalty? We settled, settled on the option of uh, if your helmet comes off you're gonna, and it's not caused because of a foul, 
you're going to have to leave the game for one play. So with that, let me stop there and open it up for some questions, Julie. Sure. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you. We've got a question back in the back. Could you go through the kickoff situation in detail? Uh, sure, um, time permitting. Uh, the kickoff, we moved it because we found that the kickoff uh, plays, the situation for a kickoff, is our number one play scenario uh, that uh, lends itself to injury. So because that's the, the most injuries occur on a kickoff, we've moved the line up to 35-yard line, and if it becomes a touchback, um, on that kick, we're going to uh, the, the touchback line will move to the 25-yard line, um, and we did that, uh, encouraging if it's a deep kick not to run it back. And the second aspect of that is the kicking players, the 10 non-players that is not kicking the ball, they have to line up and start within five yards of the kick line. So we're not going to give the players and the kicking team a running start to get down to that 4-2 speed to get down the field and have a violent collision. Um, with the receiving team. So uh, those aspects, because of the injury, uh, we decided to make that change. Um, it's, and the rule changes are, are by a rules committee set up with coaches, athletic directors, um, and commissioners on that committee. And we feel that because of the nature of that type of play, uh, those changes were, were needed. And maybe the other aspect of that is in a non-side kick. If you think of it, we, we, in the past we used to be allow the kicker to drill the ball into the ground, bounce once, up in the air high, go 10 yards, and those players that were receiving that ball were defenseless players and they were getting blown up. The new aspect of the rule this year is we are not going to allow the kicking players to blow those players up on the receiving side. We're going to give them the full benefit, just like they called for a fair catch. So you have to allow them, break down, let them catch the ball before you make contact with the receiving player. Got a question up here in front, Mariana. Thank you. Going back to the uh, kickoff, if the if a touchback goes out to the 25, are you trying to encourage more touchbacks? Or are you trying to encourage more short kicks where there'd be a full play made? Well, we've had a lot of discussions with the special teams coaches, and I'm sure there's going to be a different, uh, you know, uh, special team strategy when it comes to kickoffs, whether it's a long kick or uh, even a surprise onside kick. Uh, so they will be, uh, they'll certainly change the strategy. But because of the injuries that, that we've seen, um, I would say that if it's a touchback, we're encouraged them to stay in the end zone leave the ball in the end zone and take it at the 25. And if you take a look at the average starting position in college football around the 22 and a half, 23 yard line, they're gaining an advantage over the average type of kick in the past to put the ball at the 25 yard line, not have to take the chance to fumble the ball. Of course, you know, if you've got a really good, and it depends on which team, if you've got a great special teams and a, you know, an expert back there that can run it back, they may be taking the ball out. You know, but uh, because of the injury factors, uh, I, I feel that's a pretty good rule. Okay, one question over there to the left. Bill, could you elaborate on the uh, changes on blocking below the waist? Sure. The uh, question is the changes uh, on blocking below the waist. Before uh, last year, it was pretty much uh, in the rule book that said blocking below the waist was legal with several exceptions. And over the years, we put in interceptions, change of possessions, kick plays, and so on. It got to the point that we had so many exceptions and so many dangerous plays. The rule book this year cha was changed to say blocking below the waist is, is illegal with only a few exceptions. And we put the players on the field, offense and defense, in restricted and unrestricted positions. Linemen are unrestricted, you know, within the uh, within seven yards of the snapper. Backs in the backfield, in the, in the tackle box, unrestricted as far as can they go low either way. Everybody else is a restricted player. And it all started with crackback blocks 
uh, coach, when, when uh, you know, the wide receivers were coming back in toward the safety and, and the uh, linebackers, and it got to a point that there were so many blindside blocks and going low, and we, I told you our number one emphasis is, was high hits and defenseless players and concussions. Well, low hits are just as equally dangerous. So um, we've changed a few things on offense alignment. When they go downfield or backs, and they start retreating back toward their goal line or toward the line of scrimmage, they cannot block low. So that's a new aspect of the rule this year, that they can't do that. And um, pretty much last year we put the bulk of the changes in last year, and it, it really wasn't a problem. We had very few problems with illegal blocks uh, going low. We've got time for one more question right over there to the left. Go ahead. in general um, about them being worried that it'd be too hard to block a punt now or to recover an onside kick? I mean, quite honestly, and I sat in some of the rules meetings, we had very, very little pushback from the coaches on either one of those scenarios. The first scenario being the, the punt protectors. Uh, and we've got some really good video that we sent out to all the coaches along with the new rules. Uh, going over the top of a punt protector, landing on top of them. It's not only the people that are blocking going over high, it's the, it's, it's the guy that's actually trying to block the kick. He's getting flipped over in the midair and land on his neck, and that's a very dangerous play. And the onside kicks with giving him an opportunity to catch the ball, even though, even though the ball went 10 yards, uh, very little opposition also. The coaches know it's a very, very dangerous play. All right, thank you, Mr. Crollo. That's all the time we have. Excellent, thank you.